Good morning. So this is the last uh, video lecture for unit two. We're going to talk about the Ediacaran period, which is 635 million years ago. During this time, we start seeing algae and soft-bodied organisms. No bones. So these organisms did not have any um, internal skeleton um, at this point in time. And we can see some really um, weird looking organisms during this time period. During this time period though, we are gonna go from, uh, remember we had mitosis, which was binary fission basically um, to meiosis. And so when we talk about those two types of cell reproduction, mitosis is more of what we call asexual and meiosis would be sexual. So in this with evolution, <clears throat> when we undergo asexual reproduction, we're just making an identical copy of ourselves. So there's no change. So the important thing with evolution is that we do see change. We see how organisms have changed over time. And one of the mechanisms that allow for this is meiosis. So like I said, we talked about DNA replication. We talked about how there could be mistakes if there are mistakes in copying that um, DNA those mistakes could lead to changes as well. Um, so there are all kinds of different ways or avenues for organisms to change over time. So like I said, one is just mutation. One is um, we're about meiosis and how we can kind of mix up our, our different types of genes. So, and then the other one would be, well, we're going to get to natural selection. So as to which um, set of characteristics are more successful than others. So in this picture, we can just see how with sexual reproduction, we need um, two individuals. One is going to provide an egg, the other the sperm. They're going to um, fertilize, the sperm's going to fertilize the egg to form a, um, a zygote. A zygote is a fertilized egg, and that is going to further develop into an embryo. So with mitosis, like we said, it's asexual. You have one cell, and so you can see that cell here. And when we get done, notice we have two identical daughter cells, all right? We're simply going to, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a copy of our DNA, which is what we do here. So we notice we have single strand, one strand here, two strands here. So when we make that copy, we need two strands, one for each cell, which is what we're gonna do, basically put one strand in there, one strand in there. <clears throat> and that is mitosis basically in a nutshell, the, the brief synopsis of what mitosis is. Make a copy of the DNA, uh, elongate and form two cells and each copy gets put in each cell. They are, that is how your, your skin replaces itself is how your body replaces um, cells that have been worn out or, or, or if you're growing, you need more. Okay. So this happens in what we call body cells or um, somatic cells. And this is basically what bacteria did, except for remember their, their DNA was a circular loop as to now we have linear chromosomes as we get out of the um, prokaryotic realm and into the eukaryotic. So meiosis is sexual, sexual reproduction. This is how we make gametes, gametes or sex cells, our eggs and our sperm. Okay. Um, we need to have half our number. We know in humans, we have 46 chromosomes. We get half from mom and half from dad. So we need to get down to 23. So this would be our body cell. And then this would be our um, sex cells or gametes, 23. So we have to reduce our number of chromosomes. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go, this is diploid. Diploid means it has two copies. So when you have 46, you have two. If we notice here in this cell here, we have two chromosomes. We have two pairs. We have a chromosome. Um, we have a pair here and a pair here. If we were doing our cells, there would be 40, there'd be 23 pairs, 46 overall chromosomes, which would be really hard to show on a diagram. We need to go from being diploid to haploid, meaning only one, which is the one copy of each chromosome. So you have 46 chromosomes. They are 23 pairs. 
So what we're doing is we're splitting up our pairs. And so we can see here in metaphase one, we're lined up with our pairs across the middle. The homologous, we call them homologous chromosomes. Homologous chromosomes are, are like chromosome, mom's chromosome one and dad's chromosome one. Mom's chromosome two, dad's chromosome two. So they line up with their partner and they are going to split up. They're going to split up. I call this a divorce. Divor divorce meaning the parents get split. Notice in our resulting cells here, we look here, we have two cells, okay? We started here with four chromosomes. Here we have two chromosomes per cell. And then when we get done with the second cell division, we get rid of, we split the sisters here, or the copies, okay? And so we end up with four cells at the end of this that are haploid and are very, can be very different, okay? Because there are two places during meiosis where we can get some genetic variation. The first place where we can mix up those characteristics um, is called crossing over. And the second is called the law of independent assortment. So with crossing over, these are our, our homologous chromosomes. So this is a homologous pair I was talking about. Mom and dads. During prophase one, they find each other. When they find each other, they may hook up here. Um, it's called a synapse. A little vocab for you. Um, and at that synapse, we're going to cross over. Notice here the crossover. Okay. So now this chromosome here is not all dad's genetic information. It's got a little bit of mom's. And this one does isn't all mom's. It's got a little bit of dad's. All right. So when we're talking about this, so like when I'm talking about this particular pair here, I want you to think about your chromosomes. Like if you were going to make an egg or you were going to make a sperm. So I'm just going to use myself. So this is not so confusing. So when I made, when my body made eggs, I have, this is my dad, my dad's copy. This is my mom's. Okay. So when I make my eggs, okay, this particular egg may have right here all of grandma. So that would be my child's grandmother. Okay, characteristics. If they got this one, they'd have most of grandma's, a little bit of grandpa's. And if they got this one, this one went into the egg, they get most of grandpa's and then a little bit of grandma. And then here they would get all of grandpa's genes, uh, whatever was on that particular chrom chromosome, okay? So this is how we can mix them up. So when you make your eggs and your sperm, you're mixing up your parents, which is going to be your child's grandparents' genes. Let that sink in a little. It was kind of crazy. So I have a cousin when he was born. The first thing I said was, oh my gosh, and he did. He looked just like our grandfather. So it was kind of crazy. It is so weird how you'll see that. And this is why sometimes you're like, I look more like my aunt or I look more like my uncle or I look a little bit like this grandma, a little bit like that grandpa. It's, it's They're all mixed up in there. It's crazy how genes work. The other possibility is independent assortment. Now with independent assortment during metaphase one, this is when all the homologous chromosomes line up in the middle. They find their partner and they line up. There are multiple ways they can line up. They can line up like you see how the blue are all on one side and the red is all on one side. Or they can flip. So notice here they're opposite or angles of each other. So they can be, it could be mom, mom, dad, 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 mom, mom. And on the other side that would, you know, be the, the complementary partner. You could have all mom on one side. You could have all that one side. And this is maybe why you have offspring look just like their mom or very similar to mom or very similar to dad or um, maybe mix 50-50. Okay, so it there are different ways. Notice how we look at the gametes, how they're mixed up differently. So again, these gametes would be a sperm or an egg. So the, these are multiple ways that we can get unique eggs and sperm which gives us a different mixture of offspring.
I, I've had several students that have walked in my room and I'm like, oh, you have to be so-and-so's brother or sister because they look so much alike. And I've had other siblings that I would never have ever known they were siblings because they look nothing alike. And that is the power of genetics. Okay. So genetic variation is important. It allows for individuals to have different combinations of traits. These com combinations may make the individual more successful in their environment. If so, then they will have more offspring and some of their offspring may also have the same combination of traits. This leads to change. This is what we're going to be going through as evolution. That is what evolution is. It is a change in the population, the, the, um, the traits, the change in the traits in a population that over time can have a significant impact on those organisms. All right, so this ends the proto Proterozoic era. Um, do watch Earth making of a planet up to, should be up to like 35 minutes. If you want to go further, that's fine. I just try to give you some pacing um, so that you're not watching the whole history of Earth um, at once. So you can kind of tie it into um, the actual sections that we're looking at right now. So you should be finishing up your assignments and then preparing for your quiz. All right. So again, if you have any questions, feel free to um, ask me, um, reach out. I am very, some of you guys have already done that. You know, I respond fairly fast to, to your emails and uh, enjoy the rest of your day.